Hi, I'm Mike Rankin, Editor-in-Chief of InDesign Secrets, and in this video, I'll show you how to use Bleed in your print documents. Even though the name Bleed sounds like something kind of creepy, it's actually a good thing. In many cases, if you're sending your job to a print service provider, you should be using Bleeds. The name just refers to ink bleeding off the edge of a cut piece of paper, so there's no white gap showing at that edge. To create the bleed, you deliberately make some page objects extend past the edge of the page. That way, you have a little insurance in case the paper isn't perfectly aligned as it goes through the printing press and the cutting machines. If you're working with documents that won't be printed and trimmed, you don't need bleed. Likewise, if you're working with a print layout that doesn't have any elements that extend to the edge of the page, you don't need to worry about bleed. And in any case, if you're unsure, you should check with your print service provider to see what their guidelines are for bleed. Different printers have different requirements for the amount of bleed that you need to add. To see how to work with bleed, let's take a look at this InDesign file. So here we have a restaurant menu with a background photo that looks like a chalkboard. And you can see that it extends to the edge of the page on all sides and goes no further. And that's fine here on screen, but in the real world, where a paper is being moved through a printing press at high speed, and then cut by another machine, things can get a little off. I can simulate that by selecting everything and nudging it a bit. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's this little bit of white, which would be white paper showing. We really don't want that because it makes our print job look unprofessional. So we have to build in a little extra area of the photo if things ever get out of alignment in printing and cutting. First of all, I'll undo to put everything back where it was. I'll press the W key on my keyboard to switch to the normal viewing mode. And then to add bleed, I'll choose File, Document Setup. I'll click to show the bleed in slug settings and make sure that the preview checkbox is turned on. Notice that I can set different values for top, bottom, left, and right of the bleed. Or I can have the same size bleed all around by making sure this chain button is pressed. I'm going to add 1 8 of an inch, which is a common size for bleed, and press Tab. All the values fill in the same. And since preview was turned on, I can see the change in the document right away. Now there's this red line going all around the page that sits 1 8 of an inch from the edge. You might also be wondering what slug refers to. This is an additional area that you can add around the page. For more on the slug area, check out David Blattner's video on it in the InDesign Secrets YouTube channel. In this file, I'm just going to add that 1 8 of an inch of bleed and click OK. And now I can zoom in on the corners of the page and drag with the selection tool to extend the background photo to the bleed. I'll do it in the top left and the bottom right. and zoom back out. Now when I go to print or export this file, I need to tell InDesign to include the bleed area. So I'll export a print PDF, and I'll choose Press Quality Settings. I'll just save it on my desktop. And in the Marks and Bleed section, I'll turn on Crop Marks and Bleed Marks. That way I can see exactly where my menu will be trimmed and if the photo extends all the way to the bleed. And of course, I need to turn on Use Document Bleed Settings, right here. Note that when this setting is turned off, you can override the document bleed by entering in different values here. But again, I'll use the bleed that I set up, and I'll go back to General Settings, and I'll make sure to turn on View PDF after exporting. That way we can see the results of including the bleed area. I'll click Export, and in the PDF file, I can see the crop marks that show the edge of the page, right here, and the bleed marks that show the photo really does extend to the full bleed area. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you, which is how to set the bleed when you create a new InDesign document. So I'll switch back to InDesign, and choose File, New, Document. I'll click on Print, and choose a letter document. And in the bottom right corner of the dialog box, you'll find the bleed and slug settings. I'll click to open them up, and type in the bleed amount that I want. So I'll type in 0.125 IN for 1 8 of an inch, and press Tab, and again, those values fill in all four sides. I'll click Create. And there's my new document with the 1 8 inch bleed. So now you know what the bleed area is used for, how to set it, and how to include it in the files that you print or export to PDF. Thanks for watching this video, and if you want lots more tips like this, be sure to check out InDesignSecrets.com and subscribe to InDesign Magazine.